Behind the infamy they've endured since their revolution in 1969, Libyans have proved themselves a resilient people. Today, they celebrate the 25th anniversary of one of the most controversial characters in the world. Whilst much has changed since Gaddafi emerged as the leader of the revolution a quarter of a century ago, the world's attitude towards him and his country has only worsened. Today, Libya and its people face broader and more stringent international sanctions than ever before. Four times a week, thousands of Libyans and expatriates endure a six-hour queue under the North African sun as they wait for the ferry to Malta. The UN sanctions imposed two years ago mean that the sea journey from Tripoli is the most efficient method of travel abroad. Such restrictions raise more than 10 Inflation grows. Oil revenues have made this country and its people more prosperous than their North African neighbors. Satellite dishes abound. The American station CNN has tens of thousands of Libyan viewers. Widespread home ownership is a principle of the state that appears to be put into practice. Landlords are illegal, so Libyans are encouraged to buy their own homes by paying subsidized monthly mortgages. In this housing project 20 kilometers outside Tripoli, people live in conditions that would be the envy of any country in the Arab world. The young families who live here have much to be thankful for, and they ascribe their good fortune to the revolution and their leader. Previously, a young man like me would not be able to marry and have a house like us now. Life was so difficult. My father suffered a lot from being a worker on wages and paying rent. Now everything is available. Life has changed in every aspect. Gaddafi wrote down his political formula in what every Libyan knows as the Green Book. Unusually, for this part of the world, Gaddafi's Green Book demands equality for women. The Green Book gave women a big role. Previously, they were just objects. The Green Book gave women their rights. Now they can build, carry guns, fly a plane, drive a car, or join the army. In all fields, we're treated equally with men. Despite at least three coup attempts and a number of failed assassination bids, Gaddafi, the idealistic leader of four and a half million, still has support from many Libyans. The Green Book is Gaddafi's Bible. In it, he calls for a strict socialist system of rule and lays out a plan for a society where everyone is equal. Gaddafi's support for violent movements around the world provoked the United States in 1986 to bomb Gaddafi's home. It was in revenge for a terrorist attack in Germany, which it now appears the Libyans may have had nothing to do with. Nevertheless, the Green Book clearly outlines Gaddafi's enthusiasm for such movements. Today, the ruin is kept as a memorial to those who died. Amongst the dead, her bedroom preserved in her memory, Gaddafi's one and a half year old daughter, Hannah. We left it like this so people can witness what the Americans did. Their vandalism and terrorism. Just look what they did. It was April 1986. The very Americans who speak of humanity and democracy. But look, these are the results of what they really do. De la démocratie, etc. Mais voilà le résultat ce qu'ils ont fait. Today, Libya's foreign ministry has toned down Gaddafi's sponsorship of the world's radical young fighters. We're making the decisions and we are making the mistakes too, not only the achievements. And we have nobody to blame except ourselves. What is the role of Colonel Gaddafi then in all this business? Why is he there? I think he has a very serious problem. He ha is an idealist man in a world that is everything except an ideal. 
He wanted the people, especially the poor people, the people who used to walk barefooted and prosecuted by every government to become the masters. And he turned the pyramid of authority upside down. <laughs> How do you think about uh, your reader, uh, Colonel Kazafi? After 25 years, there are many achievements. We thank God we are having a good life from our country's resources. Gaddafi has brought to his rule something of the uncompromising life of the Bedouin. He was born in a tent and spends months each year roaming the desert. Accused of protecting the two men who blew up the Lockerbie jet in 1988, Libyan airlines are unlikely to fly in the near future. And with the hardening of UN resolve, even the ships waiting to come into Tripoli port may soon go, leaving Libyans to depend entirely on their own resources. And they are unlikely to receive sympathy from Britain having previously armed the IRA. Today, that's a decision the Libyans say they regret, and one made in a moment of anger following the bombing of Gaddafi's house. This Irish problem, we got into it accidentally. If Britain and America can practice revenge, why can't Libyans practice it? So we went there and supported them again because they are the only people who can hit the British. We don't have any uh, ballistic missiles, we don't have strategic planes, we don't have submarines, we don't have nuclear weapons, we don't have any means of inflicting the same suffering the British and the Americans inflicted on us. As Gaddafi reaches his 25th anniversary, he may yet have his greatest challenge ahead. The Islamic resurgence taking root, in, but that could change if sanctions start to hurt ordinary Libyans. Widespread home ownership is a principle of the state that appears to be put into practice. Landlords are illegal, so Libyans are encouraged to buy their own homes by paying subsidized monthly mortgages. In this housing project 20 kilometers outside Tripoli,